All right, well, Merry Christmas. It's good to have you all with us again. I cannot believe this is Christmas week uh, for us. I was even thinking about this. Uh, we were taking the 27th off this year, so it's going to be a, a Sabbath Sunday for us. So this is literally the last message uh, we're going to release for 2020. Uh, it has been uh, a year, <laughs> to say the least. It's been one of those years that you honestly will never forget, uh, maybe for the right reason. Reasons, maybe for for other reasons, uh, but you know, I was I was just taking time to think back on 2020. You know, moving into this year, uh, we were excited. Obviously, as a church community, we had just finished our um, really our, our construction project here at Zeal. We were excited to get going. <clears throat> and then the unexpected happened, which the unexpected happened in your life and my life <laughs> in the life of the world. Uh, and I remember thinking back like, man, this is going to be uh, like two weeks or so when it first started. And here we are in December, December 20th. Can you believe this? Uh, and COVID is still still here. Uh, so we're praying daily that God would take care of this, uh, that this would go away, <clears throat> that this would be one of those things that moving into 2021 uh, would not even be a topic. Uh, but obviously for 2020, it's a, been a resounding theme, but it's Christmas time. Uh, I know it's excited, uh, exciting times. I know my kids are running around the house. They're searching for gifts. My daughter uh, actually found one. <laughs> I was hoping she wouldn't, uh, but she actually did. Uh, she was so excited. She ran downstairs and said, oh my gosh, it was like this little like unicorn backpack. And she she was all excited about it uh, and it was one of those moments as a parent you're like all right or Christmas come early here we go just enjoy it enjoy it uh, one less gift I guess on Christmas morning but she was she was pumped um, I think for all of us you know I think even some of you guys can see the toys behind me uh, this past week we got to partner with Toys for Tots and had about 300 gifts or so. And we actually got to bless uh, the foster families here in New Hampshire, uh, which has really been amazing. It got put out and we had so many people come in um, and just get gifts for their own kids, for, um, <clears throat> for their foster kids, and even some families in need that could really use um, to help around the holidays. Um, so it's been a, an amazing time just to open up our space, open up our building, uh, especially in the midst of all that's going on. You know, I think there's lots of people out there who are in need, who are hurting, um, whether financially, it's just been a tough year uh, for a lot of people, depending on what, what market you're in, depending on what type of industry you're in. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a difficult year for a lot of people. I know for some of us, we look back and say, you know, I'm finishing 2020 better than I started, maybe financially, emotionally, physically. But uh, I just want you to know, there's a lot of people out there that are on the other side of that finishing 2020 still with this this fear of of what's happening what's going to happen next I, I had a job i worked at this restaurant i worked in this type of travel industry uh, and things are not looking good right now they're not looking good so i just encourage you to keep your eyes up uh, even to the people around you to connect with them give some phone calls give some texts and get in their lives and just say man is there any way i can help you this is an amazing season just to bless people i know for us at zeal we've been people reaching out saying man this has been a tough year for me can you help us out uh, financially? Can you help us out with gifts? Uh, and we've been able to do that just through the generosity of people here at Zeal. And I just want to thank um, all of you, all of you who have been part of our Zeal community, really from the beginning of this year to the end, who have stuck it out. Um, thank you. Thank you for doing that. That's, that's really amazing. I know as a, as a, as a pastor, as a leader, uh, these are moments that are defining moments, <laughs> that are, that are uh, trying moments for sure. And this whole year uh, has really been one long uh, <laughs> trial testing period. Um, but I just know I'm finishing 2020 better uh, than how I started. Better um, as, a, as a husband, better as a, as a, <clears throat> as a father, better as a pastor, uh, better as a leader really in our community. And God has just, really just caused me to dive deeper into to who I am, address a few areas, and just go after this even harder and better in 2021. Um, so that for us at Zeal, we can truly transform um, this city of Manchester as we adopt it and bring it into our hearts and we'd call it our own. Um, you know, for all of you who have been with us, we've been in this series called All This Could Change and so much of this is coming out of Luke 2, starting in verse 10, it says, but the angel said to them, don't be afraid for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, a savior who is Messiah the Lord was born for you uh, in the city of David. And we've been diving into this and we've been diving into the life of Mary and Joseph and uh, Zechariah and Elizabeth with these two sons that were born to them, uh, with John the Baptist and Jesus. And they're coming into the world uh, really about six months apart 
But today, I felt like as we finish off this series, as we end 2020, there was a portion of this that I feel like God wanted to challenge us with. And this is in Luke 2, starting in verse 48. And it says this, When his parents saw him, they were astonished. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Verse 49, Why were you searching for me? He asked them. Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. So let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you that it is Christmas. We thank you that we get to celebrate the birth of Jesus. All that he is, was, continues to be in our lives. We thank you, Jesus, for coming. We thank you that you understand our struggle, you understand our temptation, you understand what we go through on a daily basis. So I thank you that you're here with us right now. Father, I thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation that would rest upon us, that we would, you'd speak to each one of us right here, right now. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. You know, it's interesting thinking to this story, and I know as a parent, If you've lost your kid for any period of time or even just a split second, uh, there's this moment that you have in your heart of, I do not know where my kid is, and your heart just sinks. Your heart just sinks. You know, I've never lost my kids for a long period of time, but you know, we've all had moments in the store where they're at your side and you're shopping and you look down and they're not right where you just looked down and you thought they were. And you looked around and you're like, where are they? And they might just be on the other side of the clothes. They might just be on the other side of you. And you'll be like, wait, 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 what happened? And there's this moment in you that your heart drops and says, oh my gosh, all that's within me has to find my child. That's the most important thing. I need to stop what I'm doing and go find them. And many times, they're just right on the other side of something you just couldn't see. In this story, however, uh, Mary and Joseph, they would travel to Jerusalem every single year, as as was custom. uh, And they were traveling home. Jesus was roughly 12. They were traveling home, and they didn't, Jesus wasn't right in their direct contact but they assumed that he was with their traveling party, their, the group of people that they traveled to Jerusalem with. They, they just assumed that he was there. Uh, and it says that they traveled the day's journey uh, and began to realize Jesus isn't with us. <laughs> we asked around, we asked our whole party and realized, oh my gosh, where's our kid? A whole day. Can you imagine that? A whole day. You didn't know. And then it literally says they begin to search. They travel the day's journey out begin to travel a day's journey back, and it says three days later. Three days. Come on, somebody. You lost your kid for three days? Never mind this kid, the Son of God. You lost the Son of God for three days? Man, God entrusted you with this kid, and you lost him? What what are you doing? This is crazy. Three days. So I imagine uh, the heart of Mary, the heart of Joseph, uh, has sunk pretty deep. Realizing I have no idea uh, where my kid is. Uh, Three days, three days thinking, where is Jesus? Who took Jesus? Uh, And they begin to travel back to Jerusalem uh, to find Jesus. And it says they go to the the temple, they go to this place and begin to realize uh, that's where Jesus is. He's sitting amongst the teachers. You know, and in Jewish culture, when you turn 12 years old, you actually become a son of the law. You become a son or a student of the law. It means you, you, you now have a responsibility to religious duties within this culture that you can no longer just lean on your mom, lean on your dad. It's actually your responsibility to know your religious duties and to follow them. And so Jesus at 12, there's a bit of a turning point where he's actually sitting with the teachers and it it says he begins to ask questions and talk with them and that everyone was astounded by Jesus, even at 12, by who he was, the questions he was asking. I love this portion of scripture that it literally says that Jesus asked them questions. You know, sometimes we think about Jesus and just say, well, he's Jesus, you know, And and we kind of like push it off, but Jesus was a learner at 12. At 12, he was asking questions of people who were more advanced than he was, saying, I want to understand, I want to know more, I want to grow. Jesus was a learner. 
And you know, for, for me, I, I always love to posture myself as a learner. Most of us, when, we, when we're done with school, we kind of stop learning to that degree. But Jesus clearly, even at 12, is saying, I want to learn, I want to learn, I want to learn. And it's, it's, it's one of those brief moments of the life of Jesus between birth and 30, at the start of his ministry, that we get a glimpse into the life of Jesus, about who he was, what he cared about, the things he was going after. It says that he sat with the teachers and he asked them questions. Uh, and obviously when Mary and Joseph show up on the scene, <clears throat> there's a bit of anxiety around this. <laughs> like, uh, I'm scared, I'm happy, I, I'm glad I found my son, but at the same time thinking, why did you do, like, what are you doing? You, you're not even looking for us. Jesus is just hanging out, just with the teachers, learning growing like no big deal like we don't even know out of this story what did Jesus do for three days where did he sleep what did he eat like did someone just take him in for three days and he just kind of hung out is that what happened like maybe but he just sat with the teachers and he learned and he wanted to learn he wanted to grow and I, I really want to dive into Jesus his response to his parents his parents ask uh, rightfully so. Uh, why have you done this to us? You know, their thought wasn't, uh, maybe I have some responsibility here. <laughs> maybe I lost you. Maybe I left you behind. It's, it's, why did you do this to us? And Jesus' response is, is really brilliant. And he says this in the first part of it. He says, why were you searching for me? Didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house? I love the first part of this. Why were you searching for me? Meaning, you should have known where I was. Meaning, Jesus, in this, in this question back to his parents, uh, even, didn't you know? Didn't you know? <laughs> Why were you searching for me and didn't you know? <clears throat> Jesus is saying, do you remember who, who I am? <laughs> Mom? Dad? Do you remember what the angel said to you? Do you remember, I'm actually the son of God? I'm actually the son of God. Uh, do, you, do you understand that? It, let, let this come back to your memory. Maybe your memory's been fading, uh, but let it come back right now. Do you remember who I am? And he's calling them to remember who he is as a, as a person who he's been called to be. Didn't, didn't you know? I think Jesus was probably sitting pretty comfortably after three days at the feet of these teachers and learning and growing and asking questions. And, and I'm sure he was giving some thought into, into their discussion as well. And they were all amazed at this 12-year-old. And the second part of this is, is really interesting where he says, didn't you know that I had to be in my father's house. Didn't you know that I, I had to be, that I, that I must be? And I love how this terminology is actually used. It's actually saying that Jesus is saying, didn't you know that I had to be about my father's business? Didn't you know that this was my, this was my duty? Didn't you know that this was my purpose? Didn't you know this is why I'm here? This is why I'm, I'm here. And I, I think it's amazing because Jesus, it wasn't a necessity uh, begrudgingly. It, it was a necessity of, there's a joyful necessity. It was, I have to be about my father's interests. I have to be about what he's called me to do. I know why I'm here. I had to be. I had to be. I must be. I must be. And that's a great question for all of us. Is it, do, you, do you have to be about your father's business? Is it, is it a necessity? Is it your duty? Is it your purpose? Or is it just a side thought? Is it, well, I got to be about my father's business, but I'm just thinking uh, I'd rather be about my own. Or is it, no, 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 God has called me, God has purposed me, and I'm moving forward in that direction no matter what. Where Jesus says, I'm willing to stay back even three days because I have to be about my father's business above everything else. And the last piece of this, I had to be in my father's house. You know, that's really interesting because in the face of his natural father, Joseph, he's saying, uh, I had to be in my father's house. Meaning there's a recognition in Jesus, even at 12 years old, of who his actual father is. Uh, and it's not Joseph. It's God. There's, there's, a, there's a something in Jesus, even at 12 years old, a, a conscious awareness that I am the son of God. I had to be in my father's house 
even at 12. So you can imagine at 12 years old, if he's, he's becoming aware of who he is as an individual, I'm the son of God, uh, he takes the next 18 years or so to develop this before his public appearance at 30. So at 12, there's this conscious awareness, I'm the son of God, and he's with the teachers, he's learning, he's growing, he's in this space. And then for him, <clears throat> it's the next 18 years of sonship, of sonship. I, I, I can understand why in verse 50 it says, but they did not end understand what he said to them. Because I can't imagine if I was Joseph and I've been raising this boy for the last 12 years and I know he, who he is because God told me who he is and I've been his father. And then the response of Jesus back to Joseph is actually, you know, on the backside of this, you're not my father. I'm the son of God and he's my dad. I can understand why they might be puzzled by his response. They, they might be thrown by his response. But, you know, for me, when I was diving into that, that response, God, God brought something to, to mind with me. And this is in Philippians 3. And this is Paul. Paul speaking right here. And this is actually a pretty common portion of scripture. But so much of it relates to what took place in the life of Jesus. In Philippians 3, starting in verse 10, it says this. <clears throat> My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Assuming that I will somehow reach the resurrection from the dead. Now catch this, verse 12. Not that I have already reached the goal or am already fully mature. But I make every effort to take hold of it because I also have been taken hold of by Christ Jesus. Now, I want you to see this because this, this portion of scripture, it's literally the thought process of grabbing a hold of something to make it your own. Uh, um, uh, it's, it's not the thought process of just like, oh, I'm going to grab this and let it drop. It's like, no, I'm taking it for myself. And Paul's language is literally saying, Christ has seized me, has grabbed a hold of me, has taken hold of me, and made me his own. Christ made me his own. Which, connecting that to the life of Jesus, Jesus is saying, I've been, I, I had to be about my father's business. Meaning, there's something in the life of the father that he's grabbed a hold of me that I now have to pursue him with all that I have. And I love how Paul says this, it's my goal to know him. He says, not, not that I've already reached the goal or already fully mature, but I make every effort to take hold of it. It's literally this thought process of Paul saying, I was walking in this direction. Christ put his hand on me and he turned me around and he made me his own. And he grabbed a hold of me. And now my response to that action is I'm going to take hold of Christ with all that I have. My goal is to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death, assuming that I will somehow reach <clears throat> the resurrection from among the dead. And Paul's saying, you know, in the midst of this and describing the race that he's running or how, how someone would run in a race. And he's literally pausing in this moment to say, I've been taken hold of. I've become a son, <clears throat> a son of God. He made me his own. He stopped me from the direction I was moving in and he turned me around. And it's literally this moment for each and every one of us that, you know, some of us go through life and Jesus does this and he puts a hand on your shoulder, but you kind of like shrug him off. Be like, no, 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 no. I'm not going in that direction. Jesus, all your teaching, everything you, you share, no, nah, don't want it. I'm, 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 I'm going a different direction. But then there's people like the Pauls of the world where Christ lays hold of Paul and he turns him around and then Paul's whole life is now lived in the joyful necessity, the joyful duty, the joyful purpose of pursuing Christ and all that he's called Paul to do with his whole life, with his whole being, with all that he has. And I believe in this hour that this is what Christ is actually asking of you and of me. Are you pursuing me with all that you have? As I've laid hold of you and given you sonship and allowed you to become a daughter of the king, are you pursuing me with all that you have? Are you laying hold of all of me? You know, when you look back at 2020, all, 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 right, we all do this towards the end of the year. We evaluate our year and we look forward to the upcoming year. <clears throat> we evaluate the past year and we look forward. <clears throat> when I look at 2020, 
and I think about my life, uh, uh, that has to be a question. Have I laid hold of all that God called me to lay hold of in 2020? Did, did I lay hold of everything? Did I step fully into all that God had for me? Did I live this life to the fullness in 2020? Or was I caught up in the election? Was I caught up in COVID? And I allowed that to dictate where I went and who I was going. And I, I love this, even in the life of Jesus. Jesus is, you know, his parents are going one way. And he said, I, I'm about my father's business. I must be. I have to be more than anything else. And I believe this is the mentality that God wants for every single believer, that your mindset is fixed on him of who he's called you to be as a son, a daughter of the king, and what he's called you to do, your purpose in the earth. What is that? Because Christ, I believe, for 2021 is calling disciples forth. Ones who follow him and go after him regardless of what's going on in the world around us. But the Christian life has not been put on pause. It's not a pause. It's a lifestyle. It's a journey. It's a goal that we're running after. To know him, <clears throat> the fullness of who he is, and you know, when I sit here and I read through this, I think of my moment where Christ put his hand on my shoulder and he turned me around and he laid hold of me and he, and he spun me around. He said, Phil, I now call you son. And I think of my life since that moment and it has been about my father's business. It's been about <clears throat> the duty and the responsibility and the purpose and this, the joyful necessity. Not, not, not this grudge, not this like just walking through the mud. No, 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 no. A joyful duty, a joyful necessity. As Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. It has been my life since that moment. And I want to challenge you. If you're saying right now, saying that hasn't been my life. You know what, Phil? That, that has not been my life. I may have given my life to the Lord, but I got turned around and I've kind of like stood there. And I haven't moved forward. That Let 2021 be your year where you step into the fullness of why Christ turned you around, of why he called you a son, of why he created you, of why he placed you on the earth. God has so much more for each and every one of us. But you have to turn around. You have to let yourself be laid hold of and turn around and go after him with all that you have. And if that's you right now, if you're one of these people that's saying, you know what, Phil, I've never done that before. <clears throat> you know, I've never actually stepped into that. I've never turned around. It's actually really simple. The Bible tells us if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, you will be saved. And it's this turning around. It's the, this repentance, meaning I was walking in one direction as Paul was. I was walking in this direction, but Christ laid hold of me and he turned me around. He grabbed me on the shoulder and he turned me around. And I started walking in a different direction. This is the life we have in Jesus. That we submit our lives to the fullness of what he teaches, of who he is, and we go in a different direction. So I just want to bless you this, this Merry Christmas, this Christmas season, this Christmas week. I know you're going to have a lot of fun with family, friends, with, with your kids, with your spouses. <clears throat> I just want to bless you because this is a time of year where we think to the greatest gift that was ever given in the world, the, the, the person of Jesus. That's, that's <clears throat> not even debatable. This is a great time for us. And so I want to bless you as you go. So Father, I just thank you for all those who were able to tune in. I bless their families. God, I bless their time around the table. I bless their time open in presence. I bless our time of diving in the word, of sharing with even our, our children and each other why we celebrate this time of year. I love that most of the world actually gets this, because it gets this opportunity to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for coming and we thank you for turning us around and laying hold of us. That each one of us moving forward into 2021, let our life mission be that of Paul. As he said this, God, in Philippians, <clears throat> that our goal would be to know you in the power of your resurrection and the fellowship of your suffering, being conformed to your death 
assuming that we will somehow reach the resurrection from among the dead. God, that we would become fully mature in you in 2021. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen, 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 and Merry Christmas.